Okay, um, in the last video, we learned a couple methods of deconstructing infinite ordinals in terms of other infinite ordinals. So for instance, we had psi of a is equal to an infinite tower of psi a minus 1. This just denotes infinite tower. And we also had the case where we had psi of uh, some capital omega in here. We'll just do the simplest example, which is just uh, 1. And uh, we end up building a fundamental sequence that starts at uh, psi of 0. And to get the second element, we plug this guy into here to get psi, psi of 0. And to get the third element, we plug the second element into here, psi, psi, psi of 0, and so on and so forth. And this extends to um, all combinations of capital omega in here, basically. And we run into things where we have uh, capital omega times 2 or something, and we just have to break that apart into its uh, constituents parts. Uh, so we basically get a free capital omega here. So um, let's do an example. Let's do an example that we visited last time, but we were unable to deconstruct. So we have psi omega to the omega to the omega, which is uh, defined as the supremum of all of Veblen notation. So the only uh, really way we have of doing this now is with this method. There's nothing that we can translate this into uh, an ordinal that we're used to because this transcends everything that we did before. So um, what's the first step? Well, basically, we're going to create a fundamental sequence, just like before. It's going to start at psi of 0. And then we're going to plug this guy here into this element right here. Because if you remember um, before diagonalizing with something like uh, omega to the power of omega to the power of omega, if we diagonalize that, it turns into omega to the mega to the 3, basically. So you just take this um, omega that's uh, closest to the right, if that, if that helps you type of thing. But it's... Um, the exact same method as before, we're just dealing with capital omegas now. So this is a form of diagonalization just before, but it's just uh, a little bit different. The method is different. Let's get rid of that. So the second element is going to be um, this guy here, plugged into here. So let's write that down. We have psi omega to the omega to the psi of 0. And the third element is going to be uh, this guy, and we plug in the second element into that. So we end up getting psi omega to the omega of this whole thing here, which is psi omega to the omega of psi of 0. And that's our third element, and that's what we need for this, basically. So now we can plug this into here, basically. So we replace this with the third element of the fundamental sequence, which is uh, analogous to diagonalization, which we're used to. So we get psi omega to the omega, psi omega to the omega, of psi to the 0. Now, psi to the 0, we can translate back into epsilon naught, basically. That's going to be our um, our point where we transition back into usual ordinals. Whenever we reach a psi of 0, we're going to turn that back into an epsilon naught and then continue in the usual fashion, basically. So what's um, uh, so this turns into epsilon naught. So what's epsilon naught diagonalized to 3? Well, we've done it before. Epsilon naught diagonalized to 3 is simply uh, omega to the omega and then that eventually turns into omega squared 2 plus omega 2 plus 3. So that's something that we're used to. So let's replace that in here. So we have f psi omega to the omega to the psi of omega to the omega to the omega squared. And I know it's getting kind of confusing. I'm saying oh, these are both omega, but clearly you can see which one's capital and which one's lowercase. So. Yeah, it's just a pain to say capital omega and uh, lowercase omega all the time. So omega squared 2 plus omega times 2 plus 3. Now what we're going to do is to work on this omega now, we need to free one up. So let's use a rule of exponents and then bring these addition terms down into here as a multiplication term. So this turns into, uh, putting equals here, f psi omega to the omega to the psi of omega to the omega omega squared 2 and then we have times capital omega omega 2 times omega 3 and then this uh, omega 3 we can split up into omega squared times omega so let's just do that in one step here okay so now we have a free omega here now that we can diagonalize again. 
So what we're going to do, and this is um, the part where it gets a little bit uh, tedious with stuff like this, we're going to rewrite this whole thing here now in terms of a fundamental sequence and take the third element of that. So in the usual, usual, the usual fashion, sorry, we're going to start with psi of zero and then replace this here with psi of zero. So we rewrite this, this thing right here. So we have psi omega to the omega, omega squared two times omega, omega two times omega squared times psi of zero. And the third element, let's write it down here because we're gonna run out of the room. We replace uh, this guy here now with this whole thing right here. So we have psi omega to the omega, omega squared two times omega, omega two times omega squared times, and then this whole thing again, psi omega, omega, omega squared two, Sorry for the tediousness of this, but it's uh, it's important to see some examples of these things uh, uh, deconstructed. So then we take this whole thing here and then replace it in this here. So remember when we uh, deconstruct these things, um, we don't take the whole thing and then write a fundamental sequence for that. We only take things within the collapsing function itself. So we just take the thing that's after uh, the psi right here. So that's, uh, that's important. So this next step here would be uh, taking this and then plugging it um, back into here, and then continuing as, as usual. So we'd uh, turn this into an epsilon naught, deconstruct that again, and then keep going, 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 going. And of course, there's uh, really no end to this. We don't have an infinite amount of time, so we can never truly uh, deconstruct this thing in its uh, entirety. But it, this gives you kind of an idea of how you deconstruct something a little bit bigger. Um, in this case, the supremum of all of the notation diagonalized at three. And uh, I think I'm gonna leave it at, at uh, that. And next, we're gonna talk about uh, things that go past the Backman-Howard ordinal, and I, uh, I promise this time.